another another choice offering from Wall Street. A donut with 11 to 25 grams of fat from a company awash in red ink with a checkered accounting history. Our preliminary prospectus has been filed with the SEC to bring Krispy Kreme, the donut retailer, back to trade in U.S. markets, public markets. J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, and Citigroup will be three of the four lead book running managers on the deal, according to the preliminary prospectus. Those same three Wall Street underwriters have the distinction of just last week being banned from participating in a big European Union bond offering because of their past cartel activity in Europe. Morgan Stanley is to be the fourth lead book running manager on the deal. Krispy Kreme's net losses have been escalating over the f past three years, according to its SEC filing. Net losses in 2020 were $60.9 million, $34 million in 2019, and $12.4 million in 2018. During the company's prior history as a pub publicly traded uh, company, the Securities and Exchange Commission changed the company with a doctoring its earnings, ro rolling uh, as following in 2009. Between approximately February of 2003 and May 2004, uh, Krispy Kreme fraudulently inflated or otherwise misrepresented its earnings for the four fourth quarter of its 2003 fiscal year, which ended in February 2nd, 2003, and each quarter of its 2004 fiscal year and its full year result for, for fiscal 2004, which ended on February 1st, 2004. But this misconduct, responded, avoided lowering its earnings, got it, and improperly reported for each of those quarters what had come, become a prime benchmark of historical performance, i.e. reporting quarterly earnings per share of common stock, EPS, that exceeds its uh, previously announced EPS guided, guidance by one cent. The company's former CEO, CEO, OO and CFO were fined in the matter by the SEC without admitting guilt. Link in the article for that. Acor according to Krispy Kreme's website, in its Reese's peanut butter donut contains 25 grams of fat. Its original filled original cre cream donut contains 15 grams of fat, while its original glazed donut has 11 grams of fat. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention provides the following statistics on obesity in the United States. Uh, quote, from 1999 to 2000 through 2017 to 2018, U.S. obesity prevalence increased from 30.5% to 42.4%. During the same time, the prevalence of severe obesity increased from 47 to 9.2%. Obesity-related conditions include heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, and certain types of cancer. These are among the leading causes of preventable premature death. The estimated annual medical cost of obesity in the United States was $147 billion in 2008. Medical costs for the people who had obesity was 1,429 uh, higher than medical costs for people with healthy weight. When history, uh, when the history books are written on the uh, end, that was end quote, end quote. Uh, when history books are written on this Wall Street era, it will be remembered as the period when federal regulators stood down and allowed every deal with Wall Street uh, could cook up and uh, collect an underwriting fee on to be brought to the public markets. We were talking about SPACs. Uh, blank check companies, crypto offerings, Bitcoin futures, companies the public needs less of, not more of. Instead of, the fu of functioning as an e efficient and prudent allocator of capital to companies that will ensure America's competitiveness in the world, Wall Street is bringing to market the same kind of dubious deal that collapsed Wall Street and the U.S. economy in 1929, 2000, and 2008. Congress is very slowly catching up with what's been happening on Wall Street. On May 24th, the House Financial Services Subcommittee on investigator protection, entrepreneurship, and capital markets held a hearing in the U.S. initial public offering process. The hearing was titled, Going Public, Specs, Direct Listings, Public Offerings, and the Need for Investor Protection. There's a link in the article for that. Andrew Park, the senior policy analyst for the Wall Street watchdog, Americans for Financial Reform, provided the following testimony on Specs. Quote, Although many people have just started hearing about these SPACs recently, SPACs are far from new. In fact, they date back to the 1980s when they were called blank check companies and often associated with scams, bilking unsuspected investor, investors out of millions of dollars. Fraud was so per pervasive in these blank check companies that Congress passed the Penny Stock Reform Act, PSRA, in 1990 to uh, address some of the problems, which was followed by the SEC put, putting in place of Rule 419 for blank check companies. Blank check company issuers, however, devised a modern-day SPAC structure to get around these rules, reminding that us that uh, properly regulating a new asset requires continued attention and action. Mr. Park explained how retail investors are being impacted. Quote, retail investors who change these SPACs with high hopes are losing. In 2012 analysis of 158 SPACs issued between 2003 and 8, found their average one-year return was 33%, negative 33%, while 
That loss deepened to a negative 54% after three years. Between 2010 and 18, the average one-year return following a merger was negative 15.6%, end quote. Coinbase, the cryptocurrency exchange, is a good example of how direct listings work. Coinbase went public on ASDAQ via direct listing on April 14th. On its first day of trading, it closed at a share price of $328.28, giving it a market capitalization of $85.8 billion. In a standard IPO, early investors and company executives are not allowed to sell their shares for several months due to a so-called lockup period. There is no such restriction in direct listing. According to an SEC filing, Coinbase's chairman and CEO, Brian Armstrong, sold 750,000 shares of Coinbase on April 14th at an average share price of 389.10, grossing approximately uh, $291,825,000 for himself. Since then, Coinbase has been in a steady descent in the close... It closed yesterday at $222.60, a decline of 32% in 10 weeks. The month before Coinbase was brought to the U.S. public markets, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, a federal regulator, levied a $6.5 million fine against Coinbase for a bogus reporting of cryptocurrency trades. The CFTC stated, Between January 15 and, uh, 2015 and in September 2018, Coinbase recklessly delivered false, misleading, and or inaccurate reportings concerning transactions and digital assets including Bitcoin on the GDAX electronic trading platform it operated, end quote. As Americans have learned their uh, despair in 2008, Wall Street's greed knows no bounds. If there's a sad underwriting fee and annual bonus involved, the national interest of the United States will be kicked to the curb, and that fee and bonus will be collected by Wall Street's thundering herd. It would take only uh, five legislative uh, changes to return uh, power to the people of the United States and sanity to Wall Street. One. Serious campaign finance reform. Two, a three-year ban on the revolving door between Washington and Wall Street. Three, restoration of the Glass-Steagall Act to prevent these Wall Street trading casinos from using federally insured deposits to make wild best bets for the House. Four, ending the Wall Street's private justice system, mandatory arbitration that shields uh, too many of its pestering abuses from public view. Five, le legislating uh, that any bank charged with uh, more than one felony by the Department of Justice will be criminally prosecuted and stripped of its bank charter. C. J.P. Morgan Chase admits to two new felony counts and brings total to five felony counts in six years, all during the tenure of Jamie Dimon. That's the link in the article.